Today I want to share with you some repotting projects. I needed to switch out some plants outside to get rid of some old tired plants and we actually ended up saving some seeds from these basil plants. But I also needed to plant up some new plants I got for inside. I got two new plants this last couple of weeks and they're really cute and I just need to get them potted up so that way they can be happy. And I also needed to make a moss pole, so the last thing in this video that we'll do is make a moss pole together. But first, of course, I'm planting some pansies in this pot, and this will go over under my porch for a little while until it cools down enough for the pansies to come out into the sun. And then I'm going to plant up these other flowers. I don't really know what they're called, but those are going to go in a pot that I have a little echinacea in but they just need to help fill up the pot and that way it'll give the soil some more cover so that way it can stay a little bit happier. And hopefully this echinacea will survive the winter and come back and be a lot bigger next year so that way it can actually fill out the whole pot. I need to repot the Senencio today. I'm not sure exactly what kind it is. It's almost like a string of dolphins, but I don't think, I think it's something else. But it reminds me, like the shape of a lot of them, remind me of the Fleur, Fleur de Lis. Then I also have this Tratoscantia. My mom had one of these for a long time and I just wanted one and so I finally found one at my local nursery so I'm not sure if I want to plant this in like this green pot I think that that looks really nice or I could put it in this white pot as well so for this one I I decided on this pot plant right oh yeah oh that's gorgeous Oops. I forgot that I have the miracle Grow cactus mix, and I just don't like it. It doesn't have enough aeration in it. Ooh, and there's lots of splinters in it. Oh, it's terrible. So I'm going to remove some of the bark from this and use the this pumice, and there's, like, there's more aeration in this uh, orchid mix by Black Gold. I used all the rest of my perlite up. See, the soil in this, you can see the roots, but what this has already been planted in is a pretty heavy sort of mix. I mean, it's not heavy, it's light, but also will hold lots of moisture. They just aren't the same as like cactuses. Not all succulents are, you know, the same. Some of them are more epiphytic and so they need fast draining soil. Some of them are uh, plants that live in really arid deserts so they really want different kinds of soil than like one like this that likes a little bit more moisture. Some of my succulents actually I will water more than some of my tropicals just simply because what kind of soil they need. Sometimes they need a light soil that won't hold lots of moisture and other times they need um, like a heavy soil. It just kind of depends. That doesn't really make sense but uh, I might explain it a little better in another video. You have some plants that their roots want to be growing around in rocks and sand or 
Um, some, like where I live, the succulents and cactuses that live here, they have to survive in high alkaline clay soil, and some of them grow in sandy sandstone soil. So it, I mean, honestly, there's so many different kinds of plants and they can thrive in so many different places. And so for me, it's mostly what did I put this in? And so for this plant, this will hold lots of moisture. And so I need to make sure that I don't have a soil in here that will hold too much because if it holds too much, then I could get root rot potentially. And yeah, I'm just going to plant it up right to the base that it was planted up before because I don't want it to have any problems. And I'm not going to top dress this because I want this to be able to root in more and then grow more from there because this is a kind of plant that will trail and root in and so it will become thicker and happier and healthier if I can let it root in a little bit more. I am just going to use regular potting mix in here and I, well actually let me see how the roots are in this. Alright, so those have filled out pretty good. So I picked this one because it has like two other plants over here and then this one. This is kind of growing out like a on a stalk over here and it has an extra baby coming off. So I'm very pleased about that because that means this will probably grow pretty well and it, like, it'll grow big enough that I can start taking cuttings from this quickly. So I'm going to put that in this so that way it has, you know, like an inch on every side. I think that will be okay for this plant. I have this money tree that's living in this little teeny tiny pot. It's clearly in need of a repotting. Oh. Yeah. These are very dried and desiccated. They just, this just came away from it and it has mold growing in it. So I need to take off all of those. Oh gosh, oh that's so bad. How are you still alive? Oh, gross. I'm just going to pull it out of here, I guess. I don't really have any other option because this pot's so crazy. Probably doesn't have much roots left anyways, but those look like they might be okay. Oh, that's so bad. Oh, it's even tied up. It has a rubber band around on the bottom. What the heck? This trunk still feels very firm. I wanted to repot this Sansevieria, and so I'm going to be putting it in this cool little pot. I got it on clearance because it was really broken, but I just reinforced it with some E6000. I figured that since I'm over here, I would clean up this whole space and I am just cleaning up this edge of area. I've had some mealybugs on this in the past and I like to make sure that I clean it up fairly often 
and look around on the bottoms of it and stuff so that way I can make sure that there's no mealybugs on it and I definitely like to check it. But it has all these beautiful little babies down here. And I'm hoping that it'll get some babies along on the trunk too. It's not looking its best right now because it's been in a western window. And these are more sensitive to the intense sunlight. So in general, it's best to bring them away from the sunlight a little bit. But I don't mind stressing out my plants because I think it's natural for them to go through a little bit of stress. And I think it's good for them. <laughs> and so you get a little bit more of this really brighter more intense pink on the ends of it of course and um, since this has had mealybugs it doesn't quite have as much of its sun protection that it normally does you can see in the middle where it's grown new leaves it has a lot of sun protection hey you're stealing my focus <laughs> <laughs> so this new growth I'm really not worried about and I'm not worried about the outer growth it's just going it's always getting new leaves and I'm always taking off the old growth anyways and we're almost done with all that has been treated from the last bout of mealybugs, so I think that it should be just fine. I mean, it is just fine. I'm just letting you know that's the reason why it looks kind of wrinkly and not as happy. The ones down here, you can see they look plenty happy. I have another one in the same window. This is actually the mother plant. That was a baby that came off of this one. And it is almost done blooming. It's had this huge bloom spike. There is just one flower left on here. I, when I first planted this, it was it didn't have this trunk to it, and so it was harder to get the leaves off of there. But in that case, I used tweezers. But I don't mind touching the bottoms of these leaves because they're not really going to need, you know, you don't see that and the sun doesn't hit them. It does help protect them from mealybugs, so this powdery coating on it Oh, oh no, I just pulled out a baby. Oh, look it, there's a whole little, she's got a whole little clutch of babies over there. <laughs> I'm actually going to wait for this bloom stalk to dry up. I like to wait for them to dry up and to where I can just pull them off, you know, with just a little twist. And I just feel like cutting it, it doesn't get it all, and then I have to go back and get it later, and I just, I feel like this is easier for the plant and for myself. I wanted to show you something really cool though that I just learned is <laughs> what these are. Uh, in my last houseplant tour, I believe I showed you all of these weird things on here. My cactuses bloom for me prolifically, like at least twice a year, sometimes three times, sometimes even more than that. They just seem to bloom more and more every year. And I give them some uh, fertilizer, so like every time I, every other time I water them, it depends and they seem to really benefit from it. But what these are, are seed pods or fruits. Like they're actual cactus fruits and I had no idea until I watched a video the other day. I'll link the channel down below where I learned about this from. I've been watching her videos for a while now but she's been getting more and more into plants which is great because she knows so much about the plants that she's interested in and she just tells all these cool things about it like these are fruits. That's so cool. She does videos on her minimal lifestyle, but I really like watching her videos when she goes estate selling. That's my favorite, but um, she also now has so many wonderful houseplant videos too that um, you might be able to get lots of good information from. This one also has some little fruits on it too. I don't know how I'm going to get those out, but yeah, I was wondering about that because they're inside of there, but you can see there's a flower. This is the third time it's bloomed this summer alone, but it's a little white flower with a little yellow inside. There's a couple of them on there, and they make these little red fruits. So that's something that my cactuses are doing now.
Not all of these plants are going to stay like this, of course, um, but I want to just show you how they all looked. So there is the money tree. It's huge. Look how tall that thing is. It's so tall. I didn't even realize it until I was trying to get in a shot with everything else. But uh, the Sinensios I think look so beautiful in this pot. This one I'm going to hang up over like right, right here with um, this one in front of it. I don't know if I've shown this to you yet, but my leftover moss, I put it in here. I made a little terrarium and this black thing comes off. I need to make a little top for it, of course, it's not saran wrap, but the moss in there is doing pretty good. It's been in there for a couple of months. Same with the one that I actually made on for a video. This little one is doing great. My Hoya Rubra, my Crimson Princess, I think this is a princess. I can never quite remember, but the variation is on the inside rather than the outside. And that's what differentiates it from a princess compared to a queen. One has them on the outside and the other one has them on the inside. Oh, you're trying to twist yourself around there, huh? So I have some new little blooms. It's crazy because in my last, uh, last video I showed you my Hoya bloomed and now it's blooming some more. I did not know that they kept doing that, but apparently so. And this one... Oh my goodness, it smells so strong, so fragrant. It's wonderful and incredible. The other one, the other blooms, they didn't really even have a smell until they were almost spent. But this time, right away before they were even all the way opened, I could I was just over here and I smelled them like, oh, they're opening. And I looked and sure enough, they smell like, like a chocolate candle or chocolate lotion or something. A very sweet fake chocolate smell but it's really nice, um, quite pl really pleasant actually. The blooms are just beautiful, of course. I wanted to give you a little bit more context for the next part of this video where I make my moss pole. I realized that I didn't show or tell you why I use the materials that I did. I wanted to make something that was nice and full with like to where there's a lot of space for it to, the roots to grab onto and I wanted to use something that I had on hand. So everything I already had, I didn't have to go and buy any of this. And it turned out really great, I think. I used a stake that had been used for various projects and so it's nice and weathered now. And now it has a life as a moss pole. It did go through a little stint of being a body buried at sea. At least that's what it looked like before I put the moss on top of it, but now I think it looks really great and I think that the roots will have a lot of surface area to grab onto, especially since using the Spanish moss inside of it to make it bulkier and then tying the jute rope kind of tight around it, it I think it might make a natural area or place for the roots to follow along and hold onto. I'm hoping at least anyways that it will help and I didn't use just a bunch of burlap wrapped around it because I didn't have enough. I think you could probably use like cocoa coir wrapped around it like the sheets. That might be kind of cool or even moss sheets too, like flat sheets of moss. Um, you would have to maybe hot glue it a little bit first and then wrap it with some twine. Um, that would probably work. That would be more expensive because the sheet moss is more expensive than just Spanish moss. I would like to eventually make a couple other kinds of moss poles. I want to make one that I can add another layer to it also for like my Montserrat Adansoniae so that way as it grows I can make it taller. And I want to make one with jute rope just wrapped around it, like a whole bunch of jute rope. So it's just like a jute rope pole. I think it would look really cool. So with that, I guess that's all that I really need to tell you. I wouldn't use anything that was treated probably, like with chemically treated wood to keep it from degrading because I don't think that there would be a problem with it degrading but if you're worried about it you could use cedar but I don't think that would be a problem. I just wouldn't want to have any chemicals potentially in with my plant that could harm it especially if it's one that's sensitive to chemicals but if you are worried about that you could use cedar instead. With that let's get back into the rest of the video and I'll show you how I made this moss pole. Ah uh, Gunther can you work on my project? I love you too! I do. I love you too. You're a good boy. Yeah, you're a good boy. 
But please, cease. Thank you. Uh, we don't have any extra like piping or anything. So uh, we do have a steak. So I'm going to use this. Um, and then I'm going to use some burlap. But I'm going to wrap some Spanish moss in the burlap. And I'm going to use some, some jute twine around that. So hopefully that will work nicely. And then I have this. Um, this is a cording that's for making uh, like dream catchers. And I figured that since it's nice and flat, but it's also waxy so it won't degrade, but it's flat so it won't cut into my Monstera, I thought this might work well to tie it up and it'll be blend in a little better maybe. I don't know, we'll see. But I am just going to lay this down and get to it. What are you doing? Here you go. Everything is about you, Gunther. That's right. Everything is about you. Yes. The world revolves around you and your sweetness. Okay. Back to work. an outside project, Rachel. What are you doing? Okay. I forgot that to mention that I need to, oops, measure out my twine. And so I'm going to measure out four times the length of this and I hope that will be enough because I'm going to wrap it around. Okay, where's my scissors? Gunther, oh, you didn't take my scissors, good boy. Oh, you're such a good boy. <laughs> I have found my middle and then I'm going to just put it around here and then tie it up real good. I think I'm just going to tie it at the top first. I'm not going to keep tying it every time I make it go around. Because that would be silly. I probably could have done with an extra length of rope, of my twine I mean, but because it doesn't quite get it at the bottom all the way. Man, this seriously looks like something from a scary weird movie. Oh, sugar monkeys. Okay. Maybe I won't use this jute. <laughs> wow, that broke way too easily. I have it tied just from one end and I'm just going to loop it around with this to kind of tighten it on there in hopes that it doesn't look quite so creepy like other people do these and they don't look scary and creepy and like it's going to summon something strange and not friendly but I don't know why. It looks okay, it still looks kind of stupid, but... Yeah, that kind of looks better, I guess. I mean, I'm sure it will serve the purpose, but I kind of want to get a little crazy and see if I like, actual, like, forest moss stuck in it. So let's see. Let's see how I feel about this. This is gonna be like such a mess. Oh gosh. 
Maybe I should have like actually tied this part onto it. Or I could use some hot glue. Like, cause see that kind of looks cool, right? Should I just hot glue it on? Cause it's a moss pole. It's supposed to look like moss is growing on it. I don't know, that's just how I feel. And that's just what I believe in my heart. There, that kind of looks okay. Maybe I'll do some on the sides too. I am going to go hot glue this and then tomorrow um, we'll put it in the pot and tie everything up because I need my husband to help me get the pot down because I hurt my shoulder. I cleaned my house a little bit too good, I guess, and I hurt my shoulder so I can't really do certain arm movements so I'll have to have him help me. So we'll do that tomorrow and yeah. My Monstera has been coming over and smothering my poor fern so that's I mean and you can't really even tell that's really there not up high enough so it's not really getting the light it needs and I don't know it's just it needs help so this is how the moss pole turned out after I hot glued it I might need to add some more moss to the bottom but I'll see how far down the stake goes how far down I need it to be and then I'll see if I need to add anything to it. You can see that this plant is pretty darn big, but I think once it's all staked up, it's gonna be really cool. Then I'll add some height over there. So I'm gonna get this old stuff off. I'll put the stake in. This is a completely different plant, but it has a huge aerial root because it's trying to root into this poor fern over here. My ferns are just being attacked. So I think that it needs some fertilizer. And of course, it, I haven't watered it for a couple of weeks because I wanted it to be nice and light to move it to do this project. So I'm going to water it. And the water also has some Espoma liquid fertilizer, but it's very diluted because it, it does. I'm going to be putting these in there. so. I don't want it to be too much. But these take a while to dissolve. They're like a very slow release fertilizer. So I put them in in the fall and in the spring. Or like usually early fall and then early spring. Now that I'm done with this project, I'm just gonna clean up and I have two good sized Monstera cuttings. So I'll go and stick those in the fish tank because I have um, one over here, this one's from my cousin's plant. It has nice big leaves. And then I have one over here. So this Monstera, it has two of them in there, two cuttings. And you can see it has a new leaf that's growing. This is from my plant, the one that I just trained up. And I've been keeping this in, an, it's actually for, this pot's for orchids. But I think that it likes having a terracotta pot to be able to breathe with its roots since it is epiphytic. So I'm trying it out and it seems really happy. I just watered it. Its leaves you can see are kind of droopy because um, it needed to be watered. But there's, this is a new leaf and then now it has this other new leaf and I've had it potted up for maybe like two months now or so. So I figured that's pretty darn good. So I think that they are going to like being in a terracotta pot. So I'm going to root all those up and I'll plant the ones that are in my fish tank along with the ones that I just cut today um, once they're rooted, of course, in a larger terracotta pot. And then I'll make a moss pole for those and train them up from the beginning. That way I don't have like all these leaves going everywhere and being more difficult to get attached. And that way they'll look nicer from the beginning as well. So 
yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below, and I will talk to you later. Have a really great week. Bye!